What's up, everyone? All right, well, here we are. It's Wednesday morning. We're halfway through the week and locking up another small green day, coming up just shy of the daily goal, which, you know, at this point is good. I mean, this has kind of been my goal for the week, just to have consistent green days, not to do anything crazy. And look, yesterday I was double the daily goal. That was awesome. Today, just shy of the daily goal. Monday was like two thirds of the way to the daily goal. So anyways, three days green here, which is great. So sitting at probably around 18,000 on the week, this is good. After basically being flat last week with green days on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but then max loss on Thursday and then slightly red Friday, I'm glad to be kind of, you know, getting back in the groove. And one thing that I'll tell you is that the confidence change from Friday to today is like night and day. You know, a couple of small base hit green days goes such a long ways in restoring that self-confidence. Because once you lose your confidence, you know, then you start to hesitate. You're, you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I should. And then it goes anyways. And you're like, oh my gosh. And then you overcompensate by getting in too high. And it kind of becomes this like negative self-fulfilling prophecy where you don't do well. And then it's like people who are super confident are just like printing money. And you're like, how are they doing it? And a big part of it is the, the headspace, right? That mental space of I'm confident, I know what I'm doing, and I don't hesitate. I take the trades, I don't chase it. I'm not emotionally impulsive. I'm just following the process. All right, so let's pull up um, the charts from today. You know, this was kind of an interesting morning because um, when I first looked at scans before OCTO popped up, our leading gapper was MSGM and it was only up like 35% this morning. So I was like, oh boy, we don't have any decent gappers today. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a slow day. Um, so fortunately, OCTO ended up uh, popping up and that, that was the first stock I traded, broke the ice on it and got myself in the green. And the news on this came out uh, right at 7 a.m. So announces $100 million revenue forecast, releases 2025 strategic plan. All right, so that's a nice headline and boom, the stock starts squeezing up. So how do I find it? Number one, it's hitting my high day momentum scanner. The stock is popping up. It's triggering the audio alert so I can hear the ding, ding, ding. I see that something's moving up. I pull up the stock and I immediately recognize OCTO. We traded this one yesterday or we watched it yesterday, but it was easy to borrow yesterday and it was choppy. It sort of popped up and then dropped back down right here and then kind of popped up and dropped up, dropped down again. So I was a little bit like, I don't know about this. I don't think it's going to work. And that was the reason that I hesitated on it initially. But that was a good reason to hesitate because that was based not on sort of like a emotional issue, but based on how it had traded in the previous session. So it ends up um, going from 260 up to three, up to 330, up to 350, up to 380, micro pullback, should have bought right there, goes up to right here, micro pullback, and that's where I got in. So I got in right here, just about four, stop about 380, so using about a 20 cent stop, took 5,000 shares of this first trade, 5,000 is max size, was risking about $1,000. It squeezes through four, goes up to 415, 420, 430. Boom, about, you know, not quite 30 cents a share in total. That would be $1,500. But locked up about 1,000 on that first trade. Then it dips down, added back off of four. It pops up here to 440. When it held $4 psychological support, that's where I got back in. So first trade, I'm in at 396. Then um, back in at uh, 402, 403, out at 437, which was great. Added back at 444, selling at 441 for a small loss. Then it dips down, added at 420, sold at 425, small profit. Added at 405, sold at 412, again, a small profit. And at that point, I was up about $2,000, gave back a little bit off the top, sort of over trading some of these dips, um, which were, I guess um, this was between, yeah, it was it was right in this area up to about 715. Um, so I took my last trade on it at 714. So let's just zoom in on that. Uh, right, that was right down here, this dip. And the MACD had crossed over there. I still took the dip trade and, you know, anyways, it actually was a winner, but 
Um, I did overstay my welcome a little bit on this one, but not too badly. So first trade was with 5,000 shares. And then once I was up over uh, $1,000 on the day, took my cap off, traded 7,500 shares on the next trades, and you know was a little bit more aggressive, making my way up to $2,000 of profit. Okay, so that was OCTO. Now at the open, it ended up squeezing and getting back above VWAP right here, pre-market. I was interested in that, but it was a little unsure. It ends up pushing a little bit higher up to about 440 and then kind of stalling out. It just didn't quite have the momentum. And then all of a sudden it rips. It does this red to green move right here and it rips up, almost halts up and then drops back down. So that was a little tricky because if you remember yesterday on BNZI, let's see, um, BNZI yesterday did something sort of similar. We had this uh kind of opening range where it sort of popped up it sold off a little bit and then it rips up uh right here we got this nice move right in there sorry my drawing tools will slow got that move there and then we got another one right here so you know i think people were kind of thinking and hoping we might see something similar on octo but we're not really it's not really working so Anyways, got some small gains on it from pre-market, and, and that was about it. Um, let's see. So that was OCTO. And then the next stock I traded, uh, so anyways, green, uh, $4,540.29 on the day. Not bad. Uh, green on three out of three stocks. Accuracy today, not 100%, but it was pretty good. Uh, if we actually look at my metrics here, I'm curious to see what my accuracy was yesterday. Um Accuracy yesterday was 80%. That's nice. And accuracy on Monday was 85%. Nice. So those are some, those are, that's pretty solid. And I thought it was probably higher because I've been trying to, you know, these last couple of days really make an effort. And I think today was probably around the same, 80, 85%. I had a couple losses, but they were pretty small. Uh, so my profit loss ratio is also pretty good for these last two days. Um, if we would just, I would guess. So let's just look at, um, Let's see, these last two days profit loss ratio. All right, so that didn't put it in. Okay, apply. All right, so average loser, $98. Average winner, 430. Accuracy, 85%. Fantastic. That's awesome. I mean, that's great. Now, if I could keep that going for a whole month, I would be in really good shape. If I could keep that going with twice my share size, I would make twice as much money. So, you know, that's the other thing. Increasing share size, increasing quantity of trades, and maintaining these metrics. Now, this is only two days. We look at the whole month of September, month to date, and uh, it's not so pretty. You know, I mean, I, I can't complain too much, but the accuracy is 60%. My average winners are 390 and my average losers are 385. So that's that's the problem. The accuracy and the profit loss ratio aren't as good. We look back at the month of August last month and accuracy was 70%. Profit loss ratio was two to one. That was a good month. What happened in September? Got a little overconfident, started taking lower quality setups, took some losses, started to get a little desperate, started to sort of spiral. And, you know, like I said, that's kind of the opportunity cost when you, when I have a big red day, you know, I had that red day on um, Thursday and then all of a sudden, even though yesterday we had some great action on BNZI at the open, I didn't trade it because I was like, oh, I can't afford to take the risk. So, you know, that one loss kind of cost me also this whole opportunity because I said, no, I, I really shouldn't trade this area. I just can't risk it. It's costing me right now by not trading SBC. Well, maybe there's not much to trade here, but I'm also not taking any more trades on TNON, even though that's gone higher. You know, so I'm being a little bit more conservative, a little more defensive, and that is going to, you know, have some real costs. Okay, so anyway, so TNON, um, this one popped up at, it's like 4 or 5 a.m., sold off, and then popped up again here. When it broke VWAP right there, I jumped in. 
I jumped in at 475, 485, average about 480. It ends up squeezing through five and goes all the way up to a high of 540. My kind of target was a double top right here, and we pretty pretty much got it. So took my profit on that. That was it. Basically, very simple trade. Just jumping in on that extension and looking for the squeeze. Jumping in at the break of VWAP, pretty much right at the break of VWAP, and looking for that push up to uh, the double top. Then when we pulled back I, and all the way back down, I was like, yep, no surprise there. Ends up rallying back up at the open, but I just thought, no, nah, it's, you know, this resistance area here, I don't think it's worth it. Well, it did end up going a little bit higher, I guess, could have, would have, should have, but I think, you know, I really can't, um, can't be too critical about maintaining the accuracy I've had for the last three days and it's been focusing on uh, getting in early, not overstaying my welcome and trading a little bit less in total. But the profits are more than they were, you know, during the same period last week. In a really hot market, excuse me, you can get away with over trading because the market's just so hot. It feels like everything works. But when it starts to cool down, that's when you get punished for over trading. And that's when you got to rein it back in. So, you know, you got to push your limits. You got to trade at the edge of comfort zone. You got to test, you know, how how much can I trade? How frequently can I trade all day long? Uh, but then let your metrics tell you where you've got to kind of um, rein it back in. And that's really, you know, just to reiterate, um, the change here for, you know, from this, I guess this week, you know, really came out of the fact that I was looking at my metrics and I was like, well, you know, obviously lower price stocks, not paying higher price stocks, not paying and time of day. Well, Mondays have been tough. So be a little cautious on Mondays and, you know, look, you're making mistakes later in the day. This is costing you a lot of money. Stop doing that. So hard stop 11 AM and just you know, let that be it. So I'd be in a much better place if I could get back those losses. But while I can't get those back, I can make an affirmative decision right now to call it here and prevent having further future losses during that window, because it's just not worth it. Um, and someone was asking me just uh, by the way about um, my expectations for the rest of the year and kind of, you know, the month of September, if this is typically a tough year. And so we were looking at my profitability um, based on the year. We go back to 2016 here and you can look at my performance based on the month. My worst month in 2016 was February. My second worst month was May and then October was slow, but really had a great summer. June, July, August, best months of the year. That was 2016. 2017, this was different. Summer was dead. My worst month was April and September. And my best month was Q4, October, November, December. 2018 started. So now this is interesting, right? So I, I look at how strong Q4 was in 2017, October, November, December, super strong. And then what happens in January? It continues. I have a record breaker month in January. And then it slows down in February and I have a red month, first red month in a while. But then kind of get myself, you know, organized, get settled, you know, put myself in a trade to rehab, recover those losses, have a couple good months, and then slow in August and September before kind of rallying back up a little bit October, November. But I remember December of this year, of that year, um, the market was a bit choppy, the overall market. And then we had 2019, pretty decent uh, January, February, red in March, red in October, slow in November, good in December, best month was May. That's an odd month to be the best month. Then in 2020, we had the pandemic. January and February and March were slow. And then, you know, all of a sudden things went crazy. June, best month of my career, 1.3 million. July, good. August, good. September, good. October, good. November, slow. And then December, back to good. So it was like kind of crazy. 2021, worst month was in April. Nothing really notable there. 2022, worst month was November which is un a bit unusual, but you know, just the way it was, that was in, but remember that was uh, the bear market. That was when all of a sudden interest rates, you know, were going up and the market was dropping. 2023 last year, um, best month was in September and October, which is kind of unusual, not what I expected. And then November, December was a little bit slower. And then even though December was slow here, we came into uh, January and things really picked up in February. This is now 2024. March was slow, worst month of the year so far. And then April, May, June, July, August, September, 
back to kind of on par. And now we've got to sort of wonder what's coming for the rest of the year. Could it be slow, slow, slow? Could be. Could it be hotter, hotter, hotter? Could be. You know, we just don't know. So I try not to read too much into, oh, this this month is going to be like this because this is what it's been in the past. Because what I've kind of found is that it's just based on the cycles when we have hot cycles and cold cycles and when the market's hot it gets really hot and we get great opportunities and then when it's cold it's just it's slow and those are not they're not it's not seasonal it's cyclical so we have these cycles and right now we're in uh we know well september's been colder compared to july and august but it's not by any means as cold as it was back in march so you know that's all right things are um Things are going to pick back up and I'm looking forward to when they do. And my goal is to try to keep my account kind of hovering right at all time highs so that when things do pick up, I can right away put the pedal to the metal, size up and get aggressive. And I'm not having to kind of, you know, spend time playing catch up. It's just my accounts at the highs and boom, here we go. So that means I've got to keep the drawdowns really minimal. If I have red days, I've got to make sure I correct quickly and get myself right back on track. And so I've been doing, you know, although I had two red days so far this month, or I guess three, including Friday, um, I've been self-correcting pretty quickly. So that's the good news. All right. So that's it for me um, here sitting uh, just under the daily goal, $4,540.29. And I'm going to shut it down and I will not take any more trades today. I am done. I am walking away. I am not going to look at the keyboard. I'm not going to look at the monitors for the rest of the day. That's it. I'm done. I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. I'll remind you guys, as always, uh, my results are not typical. So manage your risk, take it slow. And I'll see you guys live streaming tomorrow morning.